Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and this is my review of Lost on Planet Earth 4 by Mags Visaggio. Uh, it's new comic book day, sort of. I just realized that Humanoids H1, Humanity Fast, uh, they created Tuesday as a new comic book day. They did. Trendsetters. Literally their only accomplishment. There's, you know, uh, several uh, interesting comics uh, today and then tomorrow it looks like a legit like Wednesday new comic book day like a bunch of stuff that I non ironically want to read uh, Catwoman we got the cult death metal strange adventures I'm really excited about the cult oh wow 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 and then I found out that um, that uh, Ghost Rider Wolverine Punisher dark design that I did uh, the original because that's a sequel they're doing this thing where they like redo the cover like, this was not the cover. This, I don't know why you put a tail of the Batman. Just This was the cover. You weirdies. Lost on Planet Earth uh, number four. <laughs> so, um, a, a couple thoughts. A couple thoughts. And I was talking about uh, this with Ethan uh, in a live stream yesterday. It's like, the narcissism of the comic book industry specifically the least successful people in the comic book industry and, you know as far as like actually selling comic books always is just insane to me and I, and I view the comic book industry uh, especially mainstream as some sort of prison colony I, I cannot imagine being in this insane industry for decades it sounds awful so when I was in the Marines one time we went to Guam and we, I was, we were in this unit called MSPF, Maritime Special Purpose Force. You always need like, uh, you know, well, it's like a Black Hawk Down. You know, you had the Delta Force guys go in and do the most difficult stuff. And then the Rangers were, they were just coordinating off, you know, avenues of approach. They were outside security. So that's what it was. It was Force Recon. They were basically like the Delta Force. And then we were just like regular grunts and we would do like uh, perimeter security. Uh, it was actually really fun. It was wild. One time we did a uh, an op in uh, the the main city, kind of like the Honolulu of uh, I think it was called uh, Tumon, uh, and um, we were out in the real city. Uh, the snipers got permission to shoot actual live rounds in the city, and then uh, my squad leader <laughs> did a takedown on an actual cop. Uh, who uh, didn't, he didn't know that, you know, whoever the governor or whatever, the mayor, gave permission for us to do, you know, um, actual, you know, training in the city. So the cops pulled up and they do like a fake story, like you're in the country of blah, but you know, you're actually in Guam and, and you're going to the capital city. They changed the names, but everything the same. So my squad leader thought that the cops were in play. <laughs> so they're like, uh, what are you guys doing? We need to talk to you. So he put him in like an arm bar down on the ground and the cops were very confused. When we weren't training, we were in the barracks and the different units take different times to clean the bathrooms. And I went to the bathroom one time and I got to see a whole bunch of E6 Force Recon Marines cleaning toilets. You know what? They were happy as hell and they were smart too. Because when it was, you know, a line, you know, a line company, a line platoon, regular grunts, when it was our turn to clean the toilets, uh, only the privates, you know, Lance Corporals are doing it, then the corporals were supervising, then the staff sergeant would go check. It, that shit would stretch out over like half of a day. Because you'd have to like organize it, tell everyone to do, people are always trying to slip away, you'd go find them. You do it, it doesn't pass inspection the first time. When Force Recon cleaned the bathroom, it was E6s and E7s. And it was like all of them. And they would just go knock it out in 30 minutes and then they would go out and, and party. What I'm saying is, I've seen people who are real life versions of Batman <laughs> be humble. And you have seen complete frauds and failures in the comic book industry be narcissists. Like, what is your narcissism based on? Uh, so anyway, this is Lost on Planet Earth. It is Max Visaggio's, what, 20th, 21st, 22nd uh, book in four years uh, into a career. I've read almost everything Max has written. Uh, it's uh, violent psychopaths and lethargic 
narcissist, and uh, that's what we get here. This the, the lead here is a lethargic narcissist, and this is just a classic. So she was the smartiest, smartiest ever in, uh, in this, taking the Starfleet exam. They call it something else, but it's Starfleet. But then she was like, but this isn't what I want. So she just basically partied in her hometown with a bunch of losers uh, and then threw a tomato in a protest. <laughs> What? This is this is cartoon logic. You threw a tomato, and then she gets put in jail. Oh yeah, she tried uh, she tried to use her codes uh, to hack uh, hack the Gibson, and then she got in trouble. She uh, got thrown into some other dimension where. Uh... Why are you not sliding? <laughs> this is some sort of fun house. This is a. Uh... Something from Michelle Gondry movie, um, but anyway, they're like uh, you know the old classic thing: uh, go to jail or join the military. Basilisa Miranda, you've got quite the file. World class student, and I mean that world class. Top marks in class. Speaks six languages. Oh, this is so. This is such lazy writing. First of all, you're into issue four of five. This should have been established. It. Why are, oh, okay, okay, I guess it's for the reader, but I, come on. <laughs> Usually, when you do this lazy writing, it's right before the interrogation. So she'll be like, I'm going to crack her, it's going to be easy. And then the other, uh, you know, space cop will be like, watch out, she knows judo, she's super smart. Speaks six languages, planetary judo champion, junior division. You know, I was at that championship meet, hell of a final match. Men and women fight in the same judo matches in the future. How does that work? You were, by all accounts, on track to be a productive, hell, superlative part of the human project. And then you freaked out during the fleet exam and bolted. Fell into the wrong crowd. Made some mistakes. I don't see why that has to define your entire life. So her, she's sentenced to be in Starfleet. Okay, so then they put her in Starfleet, but it's a, of course, because you've got to learn a lesson, you'll be a common enlistee, minimum of five years of service, ineligible for promotion to officer before that time. Enlisted, don't get promoted, officer, whatever, nothing matters. Um, then sure, her uh, you know record will be wiped clean. So a character that was basically introduced in the last issue, who she threw out a tomato, get ready for this, get ready who's the villain. Would you believe the blonde-haired, blue-eyed white man is the villain? Plot twist! Oh, well, it looks like they're gonna meet you in space. That's topical. He goes up. You seem surprised. I know I have a reputation for being a cowboy, but I actually rule at the administrative and organizational crap. Nowhere near as sexy to the rubes, but way more important. So in some sort of like Sweet Valley High subplot, he's like, uh, she like threw a tomato at me and I super don't like her. I need you to be like a spy at um, so I'm, Please, please look. I'm, I'm reading the actual dialogue. I looked over her file. What a waste of someone who would have been a great officer. Uh, yeah, you, you don't, you can't tell someone's a great officer because they had like good extracurricular activities and they had high scores. That's not what makes a great officer. That what gets you into an officer you know, commissioning program. But no, that's... Oh, I can tell you're going to be a general because of how many push-ups you did. No, that's not how it works. Um, so, what a waste of someone who would have been a great officer, but I'm actually pretty sure she chucked a tomato at me once. So I figure she can't be that awesome. Again, this is the captain of a starship in Starfleet. Uh, and uh, it's just petty... One of the, you know, interesting things about um, SJWs is how simple-minded they are. Uh, they are baby-brained imbeciles, and that carries over in all aspects of their life. So when they come up with a plot, they're like, uh, the men are, like, super rapey, and also, like, he is, like, jelly. Like, super jelly. <laughs> I don't even get the idea that this is a book specifically made for children, but... It seems to be written by a child. 
Um, all it is is petty vindictiveness and uh, little uh, middle school tiffs. So then, uh, you know, she's uh, you know, she's a private, so she's doing some you know private type of work, cleaning out lat latrines. They're emptying out the um, tanks that the sewage are in, but then in this super advanced Starfleet. You just like detach them and you just drag them along the bottom of the bay. Like, where are you even dragging them to? Oh, okay. So, wait. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There seems to be some sort of hose that siphons them out. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> you have what appears to be the end of the sewage line right here. The uh, sewage, the feces, uh, gets uh, put into these uh, modules that are all different shapes, I might add. This one's kind of rounded, this one's kind of squarish. I don't know, maybe different... Okay, let's, let's galaxy brain this. Let's imagine that some aliens have acidic piss, so they have completely different sewage lines. And maybe this one has thicker metal, and this is the one for humans. That's fine. So this is the terminus of the sewage line right here. The sewage goes into modules. You then detach the module, drag it. You don't get a cart. You drag this thing across 20 feet of floor, and then you hook it into another module that siphons out the tank. Oh my god, this is the stupidest shit. Like, they don't care. They don't think this shit through. I... I'm going through like a week of, of changing lettering on, you know, back and forth and multiple drafts of Expendables to go to hell because I misremembered where one of the characters' uh, tattoos was. I thought his tattoo was on his forearm and then I remembered it's on his back, which is covered by his tactical vest. Uh, so I've got to do this stuff because it would be weird. It's like people keep talking about this guy's tattoo, but they can't see it. It's on his back. So we have to put something else in there. Max wrote... A scene where people <laughs> drag modules full of shit and piss, drag it across a metal floor, and then hook it up to another module 20 feet away. Instead of, and again, they have continually said that this is the smartest woman ever. That she would have been a fantastic officer based just on her being so smart. And we're going to hear her describe herself as being so smart. And she couldn't figure out to go find a hose and connect it from here to here. Or from here to... No, you, you just leave this. You siphon this out. Maybe it has a sensor. When it gets full, you gotta go empty it. You couldn't connect a hose across this expanse. You move it up. You put it up in the ductwork. You put it down. There you go. Even maybe you have... Since you're so smart and you love the science there. Vaguely ethnic lesbian. Maybe you make a little, uh, uh, you know, module where it'll it'll block this one off. We'll pump, you know, this human piss and shit up here, there, and then uh, we'll pump. Well, I guess actually, if you make the, if you make the, probably make it a pipe instead of a hose. If you make it a pipe, you make it out of whatever is holds the acidic alien piss. So both of them can go in there. You need, you need some sort of like a junction box. So uh, you know, and then you know. These two would go into one, it would go up here, go up here, go up here, they go up there. <laughs> this is the smartest person in Starfleet, and she is dragging a metal box of shit across the floor. <laughs> Fucking amazing. So then we find uh, an evil man, but he's not an evil white man. He's an evil Asian who was beat at martial arts by a non- Oh my gosh, we're crossing the streams. This is a reference, this is an old reference, it's an old uh, uh, Aubrey Citizen G.I. Joe. He had Quick Kick basically attempt, attempted murder on Snake Eyes because you can't have the white guy better in martial arts than the Asian. But apparently there's an exception for vaguely ethnic uh, lesbians. This guy is like the corporal supervising Basilisa Miranda. What are the odds? The best of the best. Destined for greatness and first in her class, I spent my entire fleet tr training, trying to best you. And then I hear you're on my ship, working in sewage. So I'm guessing we are classmates? 
You! You body slammed me at the Junior Judo Championship. You cost me the Science Cup. We were rivals. I'm sorry? You're sorry, sir. I'm... No. You have to say it right the first time. But here you are, and here I am. Fair is fair, Crewman Miranda. And then he, uh... Almost goes to touch her, but he doesn't. And then she assaults an officer and throws him into sewage. Fair is fair, isn't it, sir? Right on the first try. Oh, you. So then uh, we get to get her actually say, Come on, I'm the smartest person on the ship. Oh, are you? <laughs> Let's go back and review the videotape. And then uh, the lesbian is helping the other les lesbian go AWOL. On a planet that she's never been to before. She's in her little enlisted uniform. They're outside. They're on this giant ramp. Okay? They're unloading science equipment. Evil Asian man is glaring at her. And then she changes her clothes out in front of everyone. And a hat appears out of nowhere. And this is her disguise. And then, hey, did you expect the best friend from the first issue to be a... a yeah, no. All women are assumed to be lesbians. And, oh my gosh! But they were arguing last issue. <laughs> True love wins after all. But here comes... She can't go with them. And now she's gonna get me too too. You're gonna leave your friend to get... space raped. Good riddance if you ask me. <laughs> Men. They're terrible! All men are rapists and all women are lesbians and the smartest person in Starfleet doesn't understand <laughs> how pipes and pumps work. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks everyone, give it to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Do as you're told, The Ballad of No, Pandemic Comic Book. Uh, both of these are closing, like Real Deal Holyfield closed uh, on Friday. And uh, I'm finishing the lettering, so you can actually read the story. You can read the you know first pass on the lettering that I'm doing right here. So go check it out. And yes, if you ordered either one of the pandemics and now you want to get the these trying times combo pack, you're like, but I already ordered it. Yeah, just email me diversitycomics at gmail.com and I'll uh, refund you for your pandemic so you can get the the combo pack of do as you're told and. Uh, uh, pandemic. It's called These Trying Times. Pretty popular. 288 people have uh, backed that one so far. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.